January 1st, 2023 marks 160 years since the historic Emancipation Proclamation, an executive order signed by President Abraham Lincoln. Although limited in scope and hindered in enforcement, its issuance on January 1st, 1863 provided a pathway to freedom for enslaved African Americans in Union-occupied areas of North Carolina, like Beaufort, Elizabeth City, Plymouth, and New Bern. Within these Union-occupied areas, freedom celebrations began as early as January 1, 1864. Historical North Carolina newspapers provide a window into the evolution of these gatherings. The first commemorations in Plymouth and New Bern took place in church spaces, as described in the New Bern newspaper, the North Carolina Times, dated January 16, 1864. The colored people held their first anniversary of freedom in the Methodist Church on New Year's Day. Speeches were made, songs sung, and a happy time was realized. It was truly a feast of the soul to the people whose shackles had been loosed and bid to go free. They will always remember New Year, for it will be the beginning of a new life for them. Although Union forces assisted and coordinated these early celebrations, leaders in the African American community quickly assumed the role of organizers and began efforts to coordinate and amplify the commemorations across the state. Newburn, Raleigh, and Wilmington all held Emancipation Day celebrations as 1866 began. The January 2nd, 1866 issue of the Wilmington Herald detailed the city's first documented celebration as including large crowds of all ages and sexes, sizes and conditions. They marched through our streets with banners flying, preceded by bands of music, and made quite an imposing appearance as they passed our office. Among the various banners in the procession, we noticed the following. Abraham Lincoln our martyred president, the savior of the American nation, the liberator of a downtrodden race. During the 19th and early 20th century, Emancipation Day celebrations drew large crowds across the state. By 1878, many newspapers acknowledged Emancipation Day celebrations, including in Asheville, Concord, Raleigh, and Kinston, to name just a few. Typically, the day began with a large parade and processional featuring community leaders, black military organizations, fire companies, and civic organizations. The parade or procession often ended with the participants converging on a municipal hall, courthouse, or church, where the program commenced with the attendees joining in prayers and songs, listening to speeches and poems, and voting on resolutions which addressed an issue of the day, such as the increasing attempts of white Southerners to take away African Americans' post-emancipation liberties. Congressman Henry P. Cheatham addressed this issue in his speech at the 1898 Emancipation Day celebration in Raleigh. Now, my friends, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. It took great suffering to get liberty. It requires great watchfulness to keep it. In a free nation, the currents of thought and agitation keep moving against the liberty of the people. Corporations seeking to gain wealth at the expense of people. Demagogues seek to lead the people astray from the tried and true paths of policy, which have given us peace and prosperity. Be on your guard. They will bear watching. As the 20th century progressed, African-American organizers tended to move away from public parades with bands and big displays in favor of programs in community and religious centers. These events continued to serve as forms for civic engagement, where African-Americans could congregate, educate, and advocate for their communities. Over the last 30 years, the celebration of emancipation has shifted to focus on Juneteenth, the day that the last remaining enslaved people in Texas were informed of their emancipation. Check back with the State Archives in June for more content exploring the commemoration of emancipation in North Carolina and the South. No matter when the celebration takes place, freedom celebrations are an important part of the fabric of our state's history. We close with a thought-provoking quote from E.E. E. Smith's address to the 1898 Emancipation Day celebration in Goldsboro. The freer a people are, the greater their responsibilities. 
the more liberties of a people, the greater the exactions. Would we be free men and worthy citizens?